Hello, I'm Liam Shoesmith and I'm going to demonstrate a few gardening jobs. I've been asked to do this during lockdown. People have asked me what can we be doing in the garden. I'm not going around doing talks, so I thought I'd do a few demonstrations on video. Not my comfort zone, but hey, I'm going to have a go. Right, so it's now the 25th of April today and now is a good time to be taking softwood cutting, especially of things like fuchsias that you've been bringing on in the greenhouse. Um, softwood cuttings can be done from mid to late spring through to the summer and it's just the soft young growth and uh, it's great for striking cuttings. So let's demonstrate with a fuchsia. Okay, um, what I've done here, I've made a newspaper pot, so check the other video I've done to work out how to make newspaper pots. Um, I've put some multi-purpose compost in there, uh, any free draining sort of not too fertile compost is ideal for cuttings. Um, yeah, so peat free is a really good one as long as you just keep an eye on that moisture level. I've pushed it in there, made a newspaper pot and I've wet it. And to wet it, I got the watering can with a rose on the end. I started away from the pot with the water pouring and went over it and then came off it and then stopped it pouring because that way you don't get the dribble going into the compost and knocking the peat or the uh, growing medium everywhere. So anyway, that's what I did there. One tip. Don't do that outside and then rush in to do this demonstration and drip all the water over the floor in the conservatory, else your wife will not be too happy. However, we'll move on. Right, fuchsia. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look down the stem and I'm going to take a piece off the fuchsia and I'm going to cut this just above a node. Now a node is where the leaves join the stem. And I've cut it just above a node on the fuchsia so it's nice and neat. And I've done a slope cut so it's not going into any buds if any water drips down. Then I've got my cutting and I'm holding this very, very gently. I don't want to pinch anything. And where the leaves join the stem, as I said, that's the node. In amongst there, there's a load of cells deciding what to do. They're going to produce a leaf, they're going to produce a little bud, or I'm going to try and persuade them to produce a root. And to do that, I'm going to take a sloped cut, which exposes more of those cells, underneath the node, and I'm just going to remove the bud and the leaves there just to neaten it up so when they're in the compost they don't rot and damage the bottom. So there we go, slope cut, below a node, leaves removed, little buds removed, there's your cutting. Alright, no flowers on that either. Better not to have flowers because you don't want the plant wasting energy on flowers, you want it producing lots of root. And because of fuchsia, I'm just going to snip the end of the leaves off just to make it nice and neat there to go into my little propagator that I'm going to make. So there we go compost in the pot. I've made a small pot because it's only a small cutting. Little propelling pencil there, make a little hole, put it in there and gently push that compost around. And there we go. That is a fuchsia cutting. Don't ram that compost in there, just gently keep it around there so there's moisture around the plant. You need to make sure that that's not too wet or too dry. It must be just moist because the roots are going to need air when they come as well as water. And as a propagator I've got a Tonic bottle, don't know where the gin is, but there's, it's definitely been used because there's been some tonic gone. And so a tonic bottle, cut the bottom off, and that is my propagator. And to do that, I'm going to put that in a north facing window because a south facing window would get too hot and it would possibly cook that cutting in there. So a north facing window will have plenty of light and it won't be too hot for that cutting. And that little fuchsia will be germinate lovely. Just to demonstrate why we put the top on it, is this is one from a recycled pot, and these are Dutzia cuttings I took last week, and it's full of condensation. And that's what it's doing, it's keeping the humidity around those leaves and keeping that, that cutting nice and humid and lots of moisture around it, so it's not losing moisture. Um, the compost has been watered once, and it's a week ago, it's not even dry yet. That is absolutely fine, and that's, they're good cuttings. Just a couple of other things you can take cuttings of the same way is Euryops pectinatus, or pectinata, one or the other anyway. Uh, to take cuttings of that, just exactly the same. Cut below a node, if I can find a decent cutting there. Cut below a node, sloping cut, remove a few leaves, and then stick that in. That's a good plant for pollinators, nice open flowers, all the pollinators can get to that. And down here in Cornwall, that'll flower all year round. Came from Mexico originally, but down here in Cornwall seems to like it. 
and you can flower all the year round. So any pollinators that wake up on a warm winter's day, they can come to this and get some get a food source. Um, geraniums, they're brilliant for it. In fact, I've got to cut in here somewhere, he says. There it is. There's a cut in there. I've made the same sort of thing out of a loo roll with some compost in it, wet compost. Stick the geranium in there. I'll make a, another propagator in a minute or two, probably drink some gin with it. And then also you can use this one. This is another go-to plant for me for pollinators. This is Nepeta Ficenii. And this is one called Walker's Low, so it's not too tall. The Six Hills Giant, which is a lot bigger. This is Walker's Low. Again, easy to propagate, and the bees in that love it. And also cats like it as well. It's called catnip. And it's, um, well, it's a bit of a narcotic for cats. And if you grow it at home, you'll find some flat spots in it because the cats love to roll in it. And then just finally, another one to go to is um, Osteospermum. Osteospermums grow well in Cornwall. Again, nice daisy flowers for the pollinators, love a sunny position, easy to propagate in the same way. So why not try that? Softwood cuttings, hey, it's plants for free. So just have a go whatever you fancy. You can do it with all these plants and many, many more. So good luck, try that and enjoy it.